Hi everyone, so welcome to the live stream today as we focus really, really on the practicing question on consolidated financial statement as we continue with our discussion. Now, last week we discussed or we did a four part series on the various principles that we need to understand when it comes to dealing with a consolidated financial statement. We saw why the consolidated financial statement is prepared. We discussed the various things about an, the entities that can prepare consolidated financial statement. Then we walked through the various principles that we need to understand when it comes to the consolidated financial statements in that case. So I see some of you guys on YouTube uh, joining us. You can comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me. Remember that we are also streaming. Uh, we are on Zoom. And uh, if you're on YouTube and you want to join the Zoom session, you know what to do. You, you can uh, get a meeting ID on my Instagram page and uh, join the meeting real quick in that particular case as we go into it. Now, for those of you who are joining on Zoom because of uh, noise and other background constraints, make sure that your mics are always off. And then if you have any questions, you indicate by raising your hand and make sure you have a good uh, noiseless background. So I don't have a lot of feedback coming in. If we all mute you and we realize that there is a noise in the background, we will unmute you back. So note that if you have any questions, you can also put it in the chat on Zoom here. Then for those of you on YouTube, you can also put it in the chat on YouTube in that case. Um, Leonard Montadi, I see you on YouTube. You said, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Leonard. I hope you're doing well. Then Chino Shaw said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Chino. I hope that you are doing well. And uh, give us a thumbs up on the video. Let's get a video engaging for those of you on YouTube and watching with us. So we're going to go straight up into our discussion. Let's not waste time and let's not go into it anything. But before I go into our question for today, if there are any specific questions that you have about consolidated financial statement, you can bring it up real quick and then let me share my thought on it for you in that case. So if there is a specific question you have on consolidated financial statement, you can put it in the chat for those of you watching on YouTube. If you are here with me on Zoom also, you could put it in the chat if you have a noisy background. Uh, but then if you have a good background, you can raise your hand. I'll call you up. Then you can talk in that case so that if there is any specific question that you want me to share my thought on, you could bring that up as we uh, answer some specific questions that you may be having in that case. Uh, Kweku Boateng on YouTube uh, said, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Kweku. I hope that you're doing well and thanks for joining us. So if there are any questions, bring it up real quick 
as I share my screen and then we take our question. So let me bring up my screen real quick on that. Okay, it's coming up. What's that? Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's up. Minimize. Okay, so my screen is up now. And uh, we want to go into our question real quick on the consolidated financial statement in that case. I uh, see some people coming in. Let's bring them up. Okay, so the question we want to solve is called via gem. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are already uh, paid students learning under my mentorship in corporate reporting or financial reporting, this question is already in the revised kit, so you can check it out. So for those of you doing financial reporting, the question is on page 49 uh, in your question kit. For those of you doing corporate reporting, the question is on page 53 in your question kit. Other students, you can download the question right now. Uh, I'm going to bring up a QR code for you to scan so that you can uh, get access to the question in that case. So this is the QR code. You can scan it and then download the question. So this is the QR code. You can scan it on your screen and download it. Uh, just turn on your camera on the QR code and you should be able to uh, download it in that case. Please, those of you joining us on Zoom, don't unmute yourself unless otherwise you have a question to ask and you raise your hand if you have a question to ask on Zoom and make sure that you don't have noise in your background so we don't have a lot of uh, interruption on the live stream in that case. And if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat if you know there is noise in your background and we cannot hear you properly in that case. For those of you on YouTube, you can download a question using the QR code. Alternatively, you can just Google ACCA F7 December 2012 uh, past paper is the question one. So when you Google that, you could also be able to download a question in that case. You can download a question in that case. Uh, Maraka said, sir, please make a video on group disposal next. Okay. Irene Labi said, good evening, Ishira. Hope you are good. Yes, Irene, I'm fine. Uh, Chino said, I want you to please talk on PUP and goods and cash in transit. I think we've discussed about this. So I don't know what specifically you have on PUP. Maybe if you can ask a specific question, I would uh, do that for you. Kweku Barton said, I want you to recall on transit item. Which transit item? You can be specific in that case. Ahmed Haruna said, good evening, sir, from Nigeria. Okay, Ahmed, thanks for joining us. So if there are any specific questions you could ask there, and let's go into our question. So via gem, like I said, for those of you who are enrolled and studying under my mentorship, FR and CR, in your question kits, FR people, you can find it on page 149. And then CR, you can find it on page 153 in your question uh, kits, your revised question kit, as you have it already there in that case. So let's go straight up into the question and let's see exactly what there is to be done. As always, I wanted to pay attention to the way I'm going to be solving the question. And that is the approach that I want you to adopt when looking at the question in that particular case. The requirements A says that we should calculate the consolidated goodwill at the date of acquisition of Grisa. The consolidated goodwill at the date of acquisition of Grisa. Now, if you remember, whilst we were explaining our principles, I told you that there is goodwill at acquisition and goodwill at the reporting date. In this question, the examiner is asking us to calculate the goodwill at the date of acquisition, the consolidated goodwill. Now, that is seven marks. Then B, the examiner said we should prepare the consolidated income statement for the year ended 
30th September 2012. Now, so once I know that I'm going to be calculating goodwill at the date of acquisition, and then I'm preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss, then I must have at the back of my mind the key workings that I'm supposed to do in that particular case. So the question that we ask ourselves is, what key workings are we going to do when it comes to dealing with the, uh, this question that we have at our disposal in that particular case? Now, because we are preparing the consolidated uh, income statement, definitely my group structure has to be drawn because that is critical for me to understand what's going on. Then when it comes to the net asset schedule, I will only need the net assets at the date of acquisition. Why is that important? Because I am only interested in the issue about the goodwill at acquisition. So when it comes to the net assets of the subsidiary, I'm only going to be looking at the net assets at the date of acquisition in that case. Then number three, if there is any intra-group trading inside, I need to adjust that. Uh, for the income statement purposes in that case. So that is also another workings that I need to look out for. So the group structure, the net asset of subsidiary, intra-group trading, then certainly there is a goodwill in the question the examiner wants me to calculate. So we're going to be calculating goodwill. That is the A aspect of the question. And basically that is it. So there will not be anything like NCI at the reporting date. There is not going to be anything like um how do we call it uh group retained earnings or consolidated retained earnings so because i'm preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss my workings is going to be centering around these areas in that particular case we'll be centering around these areas in that case so now that i read the requirements and i pre-understand what i am expected to do even before i go into uh the question we're going to be going straight and then read a question and then find out exactly what we need to do. For those who are joining on Zoom, please, if you have any question, you raise your hand, you'll be called and ensure that your background is not noisy. If your background is noisy, just type your question in the chat because we don't want to have a lot of noise coming in as we are streaming on YouTube as well in that case. So let's go to the question via Jim. Usually, the group structure is going to be understood if we read the prefix or the introduction of the question. If there is no introduction to the question, then the group structure will be determined from the first footnotes. So we're going to be reading the question in that regard. Then we build up our knowledge in relation to that. We build up our knowledge in relation to that. So let's get into it. On 1st January 2012, Viagem acquired 90% of the equity shares in Grisa. Okay. So before I move ahead, I'm getting an understanding straight up of the group structure. So let's pull up our group structure. We know that Viagem is the parent entity and Grisa is the subsidiary. From the question, the examiner is saying that they acquired 90%. So we're going to pull that up 90%, which means non-controlling interest is going to be 10%. Now, it is important for us to establish the date of acquisition, which is 1st January 2012. Very critical. 2012. Then we need to look at the reporting date as well that we are preparing the financial statement for. So the reporting date here is in the requirements and that is 30th September 2012. 30th September 2012. So from January to September, that means it is a nine months acquisition period. So the post acquisition period is nine months. Nine months. So January to December, nine months. Why is this important? Immediately I see that it is nine months. What is going to be meaning, what is going to, what that means is that when it comes to the income statement of Grisa, 
I cannot take the full amount. I will take nine over 12 of Greece's results when we are preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss. We will take nine months of Greece's results when we are preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss. That is very critical in that particular case. So now we know the group structure and then we know the post acquisition period. Now, once we know this, we go back to the question and continue to read. So you read, you don't finish reading the question and ask yourself, where do I start from? Now, nah, that's not how you solve financial reporting questions, corporate reporting questions. You, are, you, are, you work out as you build it up. Now, somebody who's saying, Shira, what if there is an information somewhere that I would have to pay attention to? If there is an information somewhere that you have to pay attention to, you will have to just change whatever you've done earlier, and it is better than going through. And 99.9% .9 of the time, there is no other information that will make you change the previous thing that you have read and undertook or done. So it's just going to be straight up like that, and then we build it up. Let's continue. So on 1st January 2012, Viagem acquired 90% of the equity shares, 90% of the equity shares in Greaser in a share exchange. Listen carefully. In a share exchange. Now, immediately I hear in a share exchange, then something is coming into my mind, and that is the fair value of consideration transferred. So workings one, the group structure. Workings two, try to get a fair value of consideration transferred. So I bring it up, fair value of consideration transferred because share exchange means we're dealing with that. Let's see from the question what we have. We have three zeros up. Let's go. The examiner said in a share exchange, stay with me carefully, in a share exchange in which Viagem issued two new shares for every three shares acquired in Greaser. Two new shares for every three shares acquired in Greaser. Okay, so the question we ask ourselves is, what is the value of the share exchange? So we give two new shares for every share that we acquired in them for the period under consideration. So this is the idea. We give two for every three. So it's going to be two over three, Multiply by 90% of the shares we acquired in Greaser. And we, let's go to the financial statement and find out about Greaser. Check it out. Equity shares, it's $1. And Greaser <laughs> or Greaser is 10,000. So we take 90% of 10,000. And then we multiply it by the share price of the parent entity. If you remember, in share exchange, it is the parent who is what? Issuing the shares. For that reason, we use the share price of the parent. So the 90% of the 10,000 tells us about the number of shares we acquired. So we, we issue two for every three. So when we get the number of shares we acquire divided by three times two gives us the shares we are going to be what? Issuing. Then we're going to be multiplying this with a share price. Now we don't know the share price now, so let's just keep reading, but that is what we can do so far on the share exchange information given to us. Additionally, on 31st December, now, on 31st December, that is a year from the date they acquired them, Viajan will pay the shareholders of Greaser $1 per share acquired. Now, that is what? If they are going to be making some payment a year from now, that is called deferred consideration. So since that is a deferred consideration, what do we have to do? We discount it into present terms using the parent's cost of capital. Make sense? We, we discount it to present terms using the parent's cost of capital. So what is the parent's cost of capital? We are told it's 10%. So let's go. Now let's read the question again. Viajam will pay shareholders of Greaser 1.76 per share 
acquired. So what do we do? What do we do? We bring in the deferred consideration. So with a deferred consideration in arriving at our figure, it's going to be 90% of the 10,000. That gives us the shares we acquired in them. Then we'll pay them 1.76 per share. That is how much we are pay paying them. But this has to be discounted into present terms. So that would be like this, 1 over 1.1. 1 .1 in the end of the day. That is the deriving what? The discount factor in that particular case. That is deriving at the discount factor in that case. So when we punch that out, that gives us 14,400. You can confirm that 14,400. Now that is a deferred consideration. Stay with me carefully here. If you remember, I told you that anytime the entity may, has a deferred consideration, what do we do? We must charge finance cost, unwinding of that 14,400. So what do I do? Quickly, I don't want to forget it. So what I will do is that I will just switch to workings three, then I'll put the finance cost because I don't want to forget about it. So I put in finance cost there, then I bring in the unwinding of the deferred consideration as per IAS 37. So if I'm bringing the unwinding of the deferred consideration, what do I do? The present value is 14,400. We bring it up, 14,400. The cost of capital is 10%. Remember, we are preparing the financial statement for a period of what? Nine months. Hence, the unwinding is going to be 9 over 12. Does it make sense? So I don't want to forget the unwinding aspect. So I just bring it quickly in my finance course in that particular case. So we punch that out. And then let's see the answer that we have. That should be 1,500. You can confirm that for me. Let's see. So 14,400 by 0 0.1, well, times nine divided by 12. I'm getting 1,080 rather, confirm that for me. I think so, 1,080 in that case. 1,080. So that is the unwinding. Now this will go to the statement of profit or loss under finance cost, and we'll come there. So when I read the deferred consideration, it means I have finished everything about it. Stay with me. Assuming we were preparing the consolidated statement of financial position, this unwinding would have been deducted from the group retained earnings. But the reason why we are not taking it to the group retained earnings is because we are not preparing the consolidated statement of financial position. Instead, we are preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss. That is why that unwinding of the deferred consideration will go into the income statement. Now, I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video for those of you watching us on YouTube. If you have any question, you can put it in the chat. Note that you can also join us in the discussion on Zoom. And some of you have also joined us on Zoom. Please, if you have any questions, raise your hand. I will call you and uh, Note that you should make sure that you don't have noise in your background so it doesn't interact with our feed. And uh, if you have any questions, you can also put it in the chat in that case. Okay, Nicholas, thank you. 1080, we got that. So that is it about that. So you see, as I read a question, I work out whatever has to be worked out. I don't care what happens at the bottom. I'm going to just work out like that and go away. So let's go. At the date of acquisition, shares in Viagem and Grisa had a stock market value of 6.5 and 2.5, respectively. Okay. All this while, I was waiting for the share price of Viagem. Now I know that it is 6.5. So what do we do? We bring it up in that particular case so that we can calculate the fair value of the share exchange. So times 6.5. 
So when you multiply that up, you should have a value of 39,000. You should have a value of 39,000. So from the prefix of the question, this is what we can do so far. This is what we can do so far. So this is my fair value of consideration transferred. So you realize that in this question, there is no cash consideration. They are making a share exchange. In addition to that, they will be making some payments in a year's time. So we discount it to the present term so that we can get a fair value of consideration transferred. And that is going to be 39,000 plus 14,400. And that is going to be 53,400. That's our fair value of consideration transferred. This is what we will use in the computation of goodwill. So. Before I continue, I could set up my goodwill as well. And goodwill is answering the question. All these things that I'm doing here are my workings. So A, goodwill. So I leave a space and go to my solution slide, slash in my currency sign, put in percentages here. Then I bring in fair value. Now, you don't write FV. You write fair value in full. So fair value of consideration transferred. And remember, they acquired 90%. And the fair value of consideration transferred, 53,400. There you go. Now, since it is not a 100% ownership, that means there is fair value of non-controlling interest, which is 10%. We don't know how it is. But we will get a figure coming up in a moment as we continue to read our question in that case, as we continue to read our question in that case. So let's go. Now that I've finished with the intro, look at the workings I did in the intro. I got my group structure covered. I got a fair value of consideration transferred. I got my finance cost for the unwinding of the deferred consideration. Then I've started calculating my goodwill from the intro from the intro right let's go then i'm presented with a financial statement for now don't look at the financial statement you, you you don't need that for now so we are not interested in that for now we will come back to the financial statement what we want to do but but the key thing you must know is that because it is a nine month acquisition let me bring in my uh pen because it's a nine month acquisition anything about Grisa we will take nine over 12. It's a nine months acquisition. So anything about Grisa, we will take nine over 12. Anything about them, nine over 12. And so when we are preparing the consolidated financial statement, we'll bring nine over 12 of anything of Grisa in that case. Let's go. So, now that I've set that aside, I've written it down that everything I'll take nine over 12, I go to the footnote. This is where the journey actually begins to mess you up if you're going to be messed up. Let's see note one. The following information is relevant. The following information is relevant. Let's see. At the date of acquisition, the fair value of Greece's assets were equal to their carrying amount with the exception of two items. Stay with me carefully. With the exception of two items. What are these items? One, an, an item of plant and equipment, sorry, an item of plant had a fair value 1.8 above, above, above means we're gonna do what? Add. Now, so what I want to do is I'll go back to my goodwill. Then I'll bring the net assets at the date of acquisition. So I'm going to bring net assets here. Then I'll bring the items of the net assets that I'm supposed to bring. Or I could do work in somewhere and bring it here as a one-liner item. So probably, let me go with that approach. I like to do work in. So Four, let's bring the net asset at acquisition. Remember, we only need the net asset at acquisition because we are preparing the profit or loss. Now, you could do this on the face of the goodwill, okay? You could do it there, no problem. Now, if you are doing net assets of the subsidiary, 
what we do is bring their share capital and then we see an amount of their retained earnings coming in also. So let's bring it up. Share capital. That's 10,000. Then we see their retained earnings coming in. Remember all these figures were on 1st October 2011, which is at the beginning of the year. So the retained earnings you see here is the opening retained earnings. Is the opening retained earnings. So you bring that up at acquisition. That's 35,000. Then we continue. This is where we bring in the fair value adjustment and bring the items there in that case. So fair value adjustments. The first item we saw in the question we just read is what? Um, plants. And that is above. So we add. So plants, 1,800. We're going to add it. Okay? Then we continue. It says that the remaining life of the plants at the date of acquisition was three years. Okay. Because remember, anytime there is fair value adjustments, there could be depreciation. Now, this one, it means they had understated their assets. That's why we are adding it back, which means they had charged less depreciation than they are supposed to charge. So any post-acquisition depreciation will be added to the cost of sales. Then they said depreciation is charged to cost of sales. So what do I have to do? Simple. I go to my workings five and I'm going to do cost of sales there. Slashing my three lines. Now, so what I want to do with the cost of sales is to bring the items that has to be brought. So let's bring the VR gems figure as per the financial statements for cost of sales. Let's see. VR gems cost of sales is 51,200. Then we bring in Greece's cost of sales. You remember for Greece, we would take nine over 12 of their cost of sales. Because the post acquisition period is nine months. Let's see what we got there. Their cost of sales is 26,000. So we punch that out, and that should give us a figure of 19,500. You can confirm that. Once we get this, we can bring in the post acquisition depreciation. The post acquisition depreciation. Now, in the question, we are told that the 1,800 is used, has three years to go. So, over three years, but it is nine months for the post acquisition period. So, that's going to be nine over 12, and that should give us 450. So, that is how we calculate the post acquisition period for this particular figure. In that case, remember, assuming we are preparing the consolidated statement of financial position, that 450 would have been deducted from the 1008, and then the net figure added to property, plants, and equipment on the face of the statement of financial position. But we are not doing statement of financial position, so that is why this post acquisition depreciation is added. Remember, assuming it was below we would have deducted it because it means they had overstated their assets, hence they had overcharged depreciation, hence we would deduct it in the cost of sales figure at the end of the day. Then let's move on to the second fair value adjustments. Greece had a contingent liability which Viagem estimated to have a fair value of $450,000. This has not changed as of 30th of September 2012. Now, we don't know if it is included in their financial statement or not included because it says with the exception of these two items. So the examiner provides us with some issues. He says, Greece has not incorporated these fair value changes into its financial statement, which means this liability of 450 is not included there. So what do we do? We recognize it in the net asset schedule and bring it up. So that's going to be contingent liability. And that is 
450. Remember, liability reduces your net assets. So we're going to be deducting that. We're going to be deducting that. So that is the fair value adjustment. But there is something remaining that you've not done. You see that Via James profit for the year is 6,200. Stay with me carefully here. It's 6,200. However, it is not a full year acquisition, which means before you acquired them, they had been in operation for how many months? Three months. So when we are determining net asset at the date of acquisition, that uh, 20, 30 of September 2020, 30 of September 2012's profit, three over 12 of that must come to the pre, uh, must come to the net asset at the date of acquisition. So we're going to bring that figure up as the retained earnings for the year under consideration. So profit for the year. That's going to be three. So they've been in operation three months. So three months of that profit is not for us. So three over 12 by 6,200. Now, if you miss this, you've actually messed up everything in that particular case. And three over 12 by 6,200, that will give us 1550. And you can confirm that in that case. So that's it. That's it. Because They've been in operation three months before you acquired them. For that reason, part of their profit, it's not your profit in that case. Let's go. Note two. The agent policy is to value the non-controlling interest at fair value at the date of acquisition. Okay, that's good. For this purpose, Greece's share price at that date can be deemed to be representative of the fair value of the shares held by the non-controlling interest. Okay, okay. So what do we do? Let's go back to our Goodwill presentation and then let's bring up the item about fair value of NCI. We could do it just here. So they own 10% of the 10,000 shares of uh, Grisa and we're going to be using the share price of Grisa and we go back to the beginning of the question because share price of Grisa is 2.5. Does it make sense? And so that is their 10% share, and that gives us 2,500. And so when you now add it up, that gives you the fair value of Greaser. 100%. And so you add it up, and that gives you 55,900. 55,900. So before I even get excited about it, I got my net asset at acquisition already in the workings four. So I add it up because I want to just build it up in the goodwill so I can get my seven marks. <laughs> I can get my seven marks. So when we add all those up, we're supposed to get 49 or 47,900. You can confirm that figure for me. 47,900. So that is from workings four. And that is what I'm going to be bringing here. Net assets. At acquisition. Then I tell the examiner that is coming from workings four. And that's 47,900. Is it 47,900? Yeah, 47,900. So we take it out. And that gives me goodwill at acquisition. Goodwill at acquisition. Now, goodwill at acquisition then becomes 8,000. 8,000. So this is the seven marks. I've finished. You see how we score easy marks in the exam hall? So I've not finished reading the question. I don't, I don't care what the heck is going on down there, but I know something is going on down there that I have to deal with, though. But so far... I'm excited about it. My goodwill seven marks. I get it. And I'm not even done with solving the question yet, but I've calculated my goodwill, the A aspect of the question. So that is how you want to read the question. You read, you work. You read, you work. So you don't have to finish reading and be confused and not know where the heck you're going to be starting from or where you're going to be continuing at the end of the day. 
Now, I see some of you coming up on YouTube. You are welcome. We are looking at a question on the uh, consolidated financial statement. You can scan this QR code and be able to download a question or simple, simply Google uh, ACCA F7 December 2012 uh, paper because this is an ACCA past question and you'll be able to uh, download the question directly on Google in that case. For those of you who are watching who are already enrolled in my course and learning corporate reporting and financial reporting under my mentorship, you will get the question in your FR question kit, page 149, and then in your CR question kit, page 153 in that case. So now I've scored my seven marks. That's exciting. So I get some hope. Now let's go. So you realize that probably at this point, the examiner could, or the time is getting nearer. That is why I tell you that don't panic to go and extract any financial statement because you won't get anything there. If you are panicking to go and extract financial statements, what are you bringing? You bring revenue into brackets, parent and sub figure. You've not closed the bracket. It is not the things in the brackets that will be marked. It's the figure that you put under the cash column that will be marked. So you don't get up and go and uh, find any issue in that particular case. That's the thing we need to understand. So you read, you solve. You read, you solve. And I'm excited about just the workings because he, I, like I tell you, the examiner has stated it. If you do the workings without even getting to a strategy your financial statement, you are guaranteed of getting a greater percentage of the mark as compared to somebody who, think, who thinks he or she is smart to try to extract financial statements. So you see, I've not extracted any financial statement, but I've done a couple of working so far in that particular case. So let's go, let's move on. We're still reading, you know? Let's still read and let's see what else we got in that case. So note three, note three, note three. In the note three, we are told that sales from Viagem to Grisa through the year ended 30th September 2012 had consistently been $800 per month. Okay. Now, for now, I just want to deal with that $800, $800,000 a month. Now, we, tell, we told you that when you are preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss, the total intra-group sales should be deducted from where? Revenue and also deducted from cost of sales. Now, it looks like I have cost of sales already. So let's bring that up in that particular case. Let's go. Let me bring in my cost of sales from the working slide. Okay, it's here. So I'm going to be bringing in the total intra-group sales for the period under consideration. Intra-group sales. So the intra-group sales, we are told it is 800 per month. Now, what is the post-acquisition period? It's nine months from 1st January 2012 to 30th September. Is 30, not 31, to 30th September. That's nine months. So I will do 800 times nine. And eight, nine, it's going to be giving us an amount of 7,200. It should be deducted. Now, this same 7,200 has to be deducted from where? Revenue. Revenue. So now, like I said, I could do this working on the face. Please. Lock. Okay, okay. So I could do this. I'm getting some feedback. Who's giving me feedback? So I could go there and then let me bring in my revenue. So I'll do workings for revenue also. This is workings five, workings six. I could do for revenue. Now you could do this on the face of the financial statement. But sometimes I want to keep my financial statement a bit clean and then get my figures coming in in that case. So when it comes to the revenue, let's bring Viagem. And then, you know, Grisa, we will do 9 over 12, right? So what is Viagem's revenue? Let's go pick it up real quick in the profit or loss account. That's 64600 
Then we bring in Via Gems. Uh, sorry, Grisa. Grisa is 38,000. We're going to take nine over 12 of that 38,000 belonging to Grisa. Nine over 12 of the 38,000. Then we're going to bring in the intra-group sales that we got in the cost of sales, the same figure. The 7,200, it's going to be deducted. So 9 over 12 by 38,000, let's see what we got. 9 over 12 by 38,000. That gives me 28,500, 28,500. So the intra-group sales, the total sales that occurred will be deducted from the cost of sales and deducted from the revenue. Let's go. So you realize that I've not finished reading the notes three, but once I, I, I need to treat the 800 before I deal with the other issue. And, and that is what you have to do. Really timing yourself in such a way that you don't finish reading and you forget what you got to do. Immediately you read to a point that you have to start, write, go write it, and come back. Let's go. Viaja made a markup on cost, uh, on cost of 25% on these sales. Stay with me carefully. Grisa had 1.5 million of these goods in inventory as at 30th of September 2012. Okay. Okay. So it means that they have 1.5 of the 7.2 that the parents sold to them during the period still in their stock. So that means there is going to be provision for realized profit. If you remember the concept about provision for realized profit, we said that we're going to be debiting cost of sales. So this is going to be added to the cost of sales. Now, it is at cost. Remember the 1.5 is the selling price. So you move from markup to margin in that particular case. So in the cost of sales, we're going to be having the provision for realized profit, and it is 25% coming in in that case. So it's going to be 25 over 125 times the 1.5, 1,500. Now it says 25% markup. So you just move from markup to margin, and then you are, realize your profit uh, provision for realized profit, and that is going to be an amount of 300. Now, there is a KG2 way that you could solve this as well in that particular case, where you look at, say, if the selling price is this, uh, what would the cost price be? Uh, in that case, I could illustrate that to you here. It's giving me a feedback here. Okay. Please, those of you who are on Zoom, if you have any questions, you raise your hand. If you have any comments, you can put it in the chat. And make sure that you don't have noise in your background so we don't have bad feed on the stream as we are streaming as well on YouTube. So I could illustrate uh, that to you where we say selling price equals cost plus profit. Now, you know the selling price to be 1,005. The cost you don't know but there's markup and markup is on cost. So that's going to be 0.25 X. So you realize that it becomes 1,005 equals 1.25 X. So if you are making X a subject, X will become 1,500 over 1.25. So the X, 1,500 divided by 1.25, that's 1,200. So the X is the cost. So if you subtract the 1,200 from the 1,500, you get an amount of what? 300 as the provision for unrealized profit. So that is also another way we could compute. Usually I call it the KG2 approach. And that never makes at the end of the day in that particular case. You never get it wrong in that case. So let's continue. That is my provision for unrealized profit. And uh, that brings me to the end of the note three. That brings me to the end of the note three. I'm seeing a chart coming in on Zoom here. Let's see.
please send me your next Zoom meeting via, we can't send anything on WhatsApp or anything on Zoom. You can follow us on Instagram and uh, the meeting detail will be posted there. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will get the details because we don't uh, really share anything on WhatsApp. Just the, what is on WhatsApp is strictly to our students. That's the only WhatsApp group we have for our paid students. So any other information will be posted on the main uh, page so that you can uh, get access to it. Please go through Workings 1 again. Workings 1 on what? That's group structure. Let me finish. I'll come back to that. I see some of you guys joining on YouTube. You are welcome. Uh, give us a thumbs up on the video. And if there are any questions that you have, please put it in the comments in the chat box on YouTube as we continue with our discussion. For those of you who are on Zoom, if there are any questions, put it in the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll call you up if you don't have a noisy background so that we don't have feedback on the live stream in that case. So that is my note three. I'm done. Let's go to the note four because it's an interesting note as well in that case. Via James investment income is dividend received from its investment in 40% owned associates, which it, is, it has held for several years. Oh, okay. What did I tell you about dividend? If you remember our discussion, it means this investment income here, okay, of Via Gem, the 500. They have uh, forty percent. Okay, Viagem investment income is oh, okay. So the whole five hundred is a dividend that they have received from their investment in associate. But if you remember, I told you something that in the income statement, it is not the dividend receives that comes there. Instead, it is the share of profit that comes there, not the dividend. Not the dividend. So we're going to actually rule this out, but I could modify my group structure and bring in the associate in which we have 40%. Now, so our focus now is we will get share of our profit in the associate. So the underlining earnings for the associate for the year ended is 2 million. Okay, so instead of bringing this 500 on the face of the consolidated statement of profit or loss, we would rather bring what? 40% of the 2,000. Because it is not uh, dividend received that comes, it is share of the post acquisition profit in the associate that comes. So 40% of the 2,000, and that is gonna give us somewhere around 800, 800. So we're going to replace the 500 with the 800 when it comes to dealing with investment income. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. I will show that workings on the face of the financial statement. So I don't want to do it separately in that case. So they have brought in the dividend. Now, it is in this question that you are seeing that the whole amount is just the dividend. Sometimes the investment income, the dividend will be included, in which case we will just have deduct the 800 from whatever figure that is there. Sorry, the 500 from whatever figure that is there, they will rather add the 40% to whatever figure that we have there. So that is the workings for or note for. Sweet, simple, straight to the point. Let's go. Grisa, sorry, although Grisa has been profitable since its acquisition by Viagem, the market for Grisa's product has been badly hit in recent months, and Viagem has calculated that goodwill has been impaired by 2 million. 2 million. Goodwill has been impaired by 2 million. So there is an impairment in goodwill in this particular case that we have to look at and see what exactly that we need to do about it in that case. Now, since this goodwill has been impaired, what is going to be happening is that this 2 million will be shared between the parents and then the NCI. Why? Because NCI is valued at fair value. NCI is valued at fair value. So we're going to be sharing this between the CI and then the NCI. 
So that is basically about the workings generally in relation to this question. So um, somebody asked about a group structure. If you go back to the group structure, the date of acquisition is 1st January 2012. They acquired 90% equity shares in Greza. So we emphasize that 90% acquisition in Greza, NCI becomes 10% in that particular case. The date of acquisition is on, is on 1st January, and the reporting date is 30th September 2012. So the post-acquisition period for the year under consideration is actually going to be an amount of nine months. Nine months. So that is how we arrived at our group structure in that case. For the person who asked that question, that's it about that. So we are done. Now that I've finished reading, I'll go back and then close whatever account that I need to close. Uh, finance costs. Uh, okay, there is a finance cost here of 420 from Greza. Let's bring it up so that we can get a finance cost. From Viagem, sorry. So you bring it 420. Then you can add it up to get a total finance cost. And that's going to be 1,500. The net asset total, we have it already. Let's add the cost of sales to get a figure that goes on the face of the statement, on the face of the consolidated statement of financial performance or the profit or loss. And that is 64,250 in that case. 64,250. So that is going to be brought in the cost of sales for the period. Revenue. Let's add it up and let's get our net figure on revenue. And that is 85,900. You can confirm that as well. 85, not 89. 85,900. So that's it. Goodwill, seven marks. We got it already done. So now that we've finished with all our workings, we can go to the B aspect of the question, and that is the consolidated income statement. So via gem consolidated income statement. For the year ended. Thirtieth September twenty twelve. So let's see. Bringing our cash columns with three zeros up, and we're going to start with a rev. So revenue, and we did a workings for that. So let's just bring it up. That's in working six eighty five nine hundred. Then cost of sales. We did a workings for that also. Workings five, sixty four two fifty. So you see how clean my financial statement is already starting to look. We less that, and that is going to give us the gross profit. So when we punch that out, our gross profit will be twenty one six fifty. Then we go back to the question to pick the items one after the other. Let's go. There is distribution cost. So let's bring it. Remember with the distribution cost, we will pick nine over 12 of Greece's figure. So 1,006 distribution cost. We're going to have 1,006 plus 1,800. We'll pick nine over 12 of that. Nine over 12 of 1,800, and that is going to give us an amount in total of 2950. We're going to less that out. Next item is administrative expenses. So admin expenses. We bring it in 3800 for Viagem, 2400 for Greza, 
So 3,800 plus 9 over 12 by 2,400. And that is going to give us an amount of, let's see. Nine divided by twelve by two four hundred. That's thousand eight. So thousand eight plus three eight hundred. That'll be five thousand six hundred. But remember, there was uh, an impairment in goodwill, so we could bring that item up. It could have been added with the admin expenses. So we bring the impairment in goodwill directly 2000 given to us to be deducted here. Other times the impairment in goodwill could also be added to cost of sales. There are times it could be added to the cost of sales. Other times it could be added to admin expenses or it could be a line item on its own in that case. Once we have that, we can then bring in our income from associates. Remember I told you about that, that we don't bring the dividend. So income from the associates. And we said it is 40% of how much? 2,000. And that's going to be 800. Now that is going to be an addition in that case. And then there is a finance cost. But before finance cost, we could uh, present our answer to get profit before interest and tax coming in. Let's see how they presented their own. Okay, they brought everything up to get a profit for the before tax. So let's just follow what they did. So finance cost. I think we did a workings for that. So we'll go pick our workings up. Where do we have it? Finance cost is, is in workings 3,500. So you see that when you do the workings, you're just going to now pick it and then throw it down, pick it and throw it down. Then we deduct that all to get a profit before tax. And uh, if we punch all these out, we should get an amount of 10,000. 400. That is our profit before tax, 10,400. Somebody is asking uh, on YouTube, Lamini said, are we not supposed to deduct the impairment on goodwill to get a carrying amount of goodwill in working three? We didn't do any workings for goodwill. You are supposed to calculate goodwill at the date of acquisition. So there is no need to come and deduct the impairment to get a carrying amount of goodwill. The examiner didn't ask you to calculate goodwill at the reporting date. If he has said we should calculate goodwill at the reporting date, then we would have deducted the 2000 from the 8000 So we'll get 6000 and that will be the goodwill at the reporting date. But in the question, the examiner said we should calculate the goodwill at the date of acquisition. So there will be no deduction done here. There will be no deduction done. If you do that deduction, the whole seven marks, you're literally going to be slashing it into two because they didn't ask you to do goodwill at the year end. They asked you for goodwill at acquisition and you will lose the marks at the end of the day because you proceeded to do something you were not supposed to do. Hence, your answer changes at the end of the day. So Lamini, you end here because you are supposed to calculate goodwill at acquisition, not at the reporting date. Any other questions, put it in the chat for me on YouTube. The next one, we see income tax. Okay, 2800 for uh, the parents and then 1006 for the sub. Let's go back. Income tax. 2800 plus 9 over 12 by 1600. And that gives us an amount of 4000. You less that, and that gives you the consolidated profit for the year. And that's 6000. 
400, 6,400. So now that you get a consolidated profit for the year, it has to be splitted between the CI and then the NCI. So profit for the year, attributable to first the parent entity. So equity holders of the parents. And then NCI. So how do we do the split? Stay with me carefully here. We know our total profit is 6,400. But how do we get NCI's share of that profit? So quickly, we need to do our last workings. And that will be my working seven, quickly, so that we can calculate the post-acquisition profit. So to calculate the post-acquisition profit, we bring in their profit for the year. Remember, they made a profit of, from, the, from the financial statement, they made a profit of 6,200. We do 9 over 12 of that. Remember, we brought this figure when we we're doing the net assets. So I could go there and pick it up. Okay, we rather brought 3 over 12 of that. So let's do 9 over 12 by this one. 9 divided by 12 by 6,200. I'm getting four, six, five, zero. Then we bring in the fair value adjustment things that we did. If you remember clearly on that, there was an additional depreciation. If you remember, we brought it in cost of sales. This additional depreciation will be deducted here. And uh, that's 450. In that case, then we're going to be bringing in a goodwill impairment. That's 2000 will be brought as well in that case. Now, all these are expenses. They are going to be deducted. Why are we deducting goodwill from the post acquisition profit? Because NCI is valued at fair value. So the goodwill must be shared between the parent and the sub. And this leads us to the post acquisition uh, profit. And so let's punch that out, 4, 6, four, six five, zero plus, sorry, minus, rather, 4650 minus 450. minus 2,000, and that gives us 2,200. So it is this 2,200 that will take 10% to NCI here. So we'll do 2,200 by 10%, and that is 220, so that the balancing figure becomes what goes to the parents in that case. So 6,400 minus 220. And that gives us 6,180. This is how we prepare the consolidated statement or income statement for the entity and how we go through the various workings. Any questions, please? Any questions, please? Any questions? Lamini said, well understood, sir. Thank you so much. It's important to read instructions carefully. Yes, that is very important. Dominic on, on Diwa said, just goodwill determination is kindly repeat. Hey, the goodwill determination, I should kindly, I should repeat it or what? I don't know. What do you mean? What's my goodwill? This is the goodwill that we calculated. It is a requirement of the question in the A aspect of the question to be specific. So we calculated a fair value of consideration transferred. We did a workings for that. That was in workings two. Here, there was a share exchange. There was a deferred consideration. 
So we brought it up. Workings too. Then uh, NCI value, we calculated it. And then the net asset of at the date of acquisition, we calculated that one also in workings four, as you can see here in that case. And that's how we arrived at the goodwill. Any questions, please? Any questions? Any other questions? So that's how we deal with the consolidated statement of profit or loss or the consolidated income statement. Very sweet, simple, straight to the point. Now, my takeaway for you in, in solving the question is to go through the question the way I went through it. Because in the exam hall, you don't read, the, there is no need. Once you read the requirements and know what you're supposed to do, all you need to do is read a footnote one after the other, piece by piece, work. You read, work. You read, work. You read, work. You read, work. That is how you succeed in the preparation of consolidated financial statements. You don't succeed by going to rush to extract any financial statement and try to outsmart the examiner and try to bring and post certain things. No, 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 no. You, you just give yourself heart attack. Just go through the question bit by bit, and that's how you increase your chances of passing the exams. And like I say all the time, irrespective of how excited you are about consolidated financial statement, it is a question that you don't want to start with in the exam hall, let it be your third or your fourth or probably your fifth question. And you want to just be excited about being able to know where to pick the easy marks from, like the calculation of goodwill, getting the group structure, the net assets thing, fair value of consideration transferred. All these are workings that will score you marks at the end of the day. And you want to gather the small, small marks as much as you can when you are working through it in that particular case. So that is what you need to understand about the income statement. I'm looking at it possibly tomorrow. We will take another question that will look at the consolidated statement of financial position so that you see how the consolidated statement of financial position is also going to be prepared. But we're going to look at, look at the question from another angle, especially about the uh, goodwill calculation, about the fair value of consideration transferred, then the intragroup trading and all those things is going to be something that we need to uh, look out for in that case. Please project the consolidated income statement again. Okay, let me bring that up. So like I said, for those of you who are learning under my mentorship, FR students, you can see the question in page uh, 149 in your kits via gem in your kits, and then corporate reporting students, you can see it on page 153, I hope so, am I right? Yeah, 153 in that case. Please share your Twitter account with some of us who want to follow you. Uh, my Twitter is insura underscore premium, but please follow me on Instagram rather. For now, I'm not too active on Twitter, even though my team posts there sometimes. So a lot of the information, you will get it on Instagram. And it is Shira Premium, just my channel name or, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, Bright, you're good. Let me know if you're good. So it's the same name, Shira Premium. That's my Instagram handle. And you can follow me on Instagram and uh, I'm going to be posting anything that has to be posted there. Um, Bright, you're good. Let me know if you're good with it. I don't know if you were taking picture or you were writing, which is which. Okay. Okay. You're good. Right. So for those of you who want to follow me on Instagram, the handle is Inshira Premium. The meeting ID will be posted there. And uh, we are also looking at hosting some sessions uh, strictly on corporate reporting and financial reporting, focusing on very key areas uh, in September. So keep following me on Instagram. And uh, when that session is ready, we're going to be announcing about it. But it's going to be a paid session for your information because I'm going to take you through four weeks, three hours per session 
where we're going to be focusing on just specific areas of the corporate reporting, financial reporting syllabus, like ratios, like ethics, like the standards. And I want to just prepare you for the 60 marks in the exam hall. And if I can push you in those four meetings and guide you for 60 marks, you'll be in a better position to pass the exams in that case. So that session arrangement of that will be posted on my Instagram page. So you just follow me on Instagram and keep on joining our sessions because in September, we're going to be announcing about that session as well. Strictly corporate reporting, financial reporting. We're not doing everything. We're just focusing on specific done deal areas. Ethics, there is a question on ethics in the exam or how do you answer it? Ratio, there is going to be ratio question in the exam or how do you answer it? Then there is going to be question on standards. How do you answer it? So we're going to be having four sessions spread across and uh, the timing, the cost involved and other details will be available on my Instagram page and you can get that as well in that case. Um, Nelly Muli. Mululeka, sorry if I don't mention your name right now. I'm, I'm just destroying your name. Forgive me, okay? Why income or deferred tax is ignored? Was any deferred tax issue in the question? There was no deferred tax in the question, no. Uh, Nelly, there was no deferred tax in the question, so I'm sorry, but I don't know where you're reading from. So that's it about that. Thank you very much for joining me. Same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. We're going to be, I'm looking at if we can, take a question also on the statement of financial position tomorrow. So whatever be the case, the detail will be posted on, on our Instagram page and uh, you can get it. And then you can join me on the live stream tomorrow as well. Thank you very much for joining me. For those of you who join on Zoom, thank you. And for those of you who join us on YouTube also, thank you very much. And I'll catch you same time tomorrow.